afternoon, folks, and welcome to another Lunch and Learn. I'm Kevin Holbrook, part of our technical staff here in CAD Dimensions. Uh, today we're going to take about 30 minutes or so and to talk a little bit about routing libraries. More specifically, uh, I want to focus on some of the tools that are included in the software to help you set up and maintain your routing libraries. Uh, if you're using route, routing currently in SOLIDWORKS, you know that the library system uh, that's included in the software doesn't necessarily include everything uh, you would desire to be in routing. So it requires you to do two things, really understand what you have in the library and uh, number two, kind of put new files in and put them in the right place and again, on top of that, understand what you've already done. So that's going to kind of be my focus uh, of today is how we take a an overall look at, at what's been done. And uh, my agenda for today is, is really focused on these five things. Now you'll note that these are five things that are kind of behind the scenes of routing libraries, but I want to introduce you if you haven't already been introduced to the routing library manager. Um, this is a tool that's going to allow us to perform multiple functions uh, within routing. Um, we're going to cover in depth the routing file locations and settings tab within the library manager, uh, the piping and tubing database and where that can be used, uh, the route properties template, and then to close it all off the routing component wizard. But let's take a step back for a moment uh, into SOLIDWORKS and just take a look at out of the box what to expect from routing. Um, your routing out of the box is included in the design library which we all have access to through our task pane. Now your design library may look slightly different. I know I've added some components over, over time here. But essentially the reason why they store the design library in routing in the same spot is simply to allow us the drag and drop capabilities. So if I wanted to look at pipe and I wanted to go in and see what elbows I have, I have a nice little system for drag and drop. Now let's just start a, uh, a route here for a moment. I do have routing set to go. When I drag and drop something in to start routing, uh, for those of you who have used routing, you understand that it presents me with all the different variations of that size, um, the schedule, the, the ratings, um, all in the configuration dialogs. Um, it's going to, in this case, prompt me to save the assembly. But understanding what configurations I have, what sizes I have, what schedule pipe I have, the elbows, are they matching? That's kind of where my conversation is going a little bit today. To add to our conversation, I just want to continue the start of this route just to talk about some of the things that we run into. Uh, first thing I want to point out when, when you start a route in SOLIDWORKS, one of the things that it asks for is a routing template. Now, a uh, routing template is, is just a, uh, a template like we know in SOLIDWORKS that has maybe some routing properties associated with it. We'll talk a little bit more about this as we get later on in the process. Just below that is something we call a route specification. And you'll notice that it is also asking for a template. I will cover this uh, also in our conversation. The rest of this information is really just me pointing the software to where the files exist that I want to use. Now the software does a few things behind the scenes to facilitate and to almost ensure that you're working out of the library, the library that you've specified. Okay, So with this just initial view in mind, let's take a step back and talk more about the library. Now you saw the design library had a routing or piping function uh, folder within it. 
I want to talk about how that's set up and how that's viewed and, and what we do for that. So I'm going to introduce you now to something that's called the Routing Library Manager. It's installed as part of your tools uh, in SOLIDWORKS for every installation of Premium. And this is going to allow us to perform a lot of different functions to really set up and manage the libraries uh, in routing. So let's take a look at where I might find that. If you go to Start All Programs on your machine, <coughs> go to your SOLIDWORKS version under SOLIDWORKS Tools. In there, you'll find the Routing Library Manager. Okay. Uh, when this pops up, it actually consists of eight different tabs, all of which can be accessed from the main screen by pressing the button. What we're going to go through is a few of those tabs today and try to make sense as to what it's even telling me to do. Now the first one that you almost have to start with is the routing file locations and settings. Now we have to tell routing where the files are that we're going to use for the routing application. Now by default uh, it's set to this design library location the exact same as what you saw me uh, grab inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now I've modified mine a little bit here. I actually created a dummy folder on my desktop, this uh, Users Kevin Desktop Routing Library. Now let me just go to my desktop for a minute just so you can uh, get a sense of what I'm looking at. Um, I have on my desktop a routing library folder and in there I have four subfolders. Okay. There's nothing in any of these at this point. So it's a completely blank library. But you'll notice there's something in here called a routing lib.db. This is a database file that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Now, once you specify the location that you're going to store your routing components, a couple other things happen. And one of those things is actually in SOLIDWORKS. In SOLIDWORKS, when you go to your Tools Options, File Locations, there is a File Location for Reference Documents. Now, this conversation can, uh, can get a little more extensive, but here's what happens with a reference document location. What happens when SOLIDWORKS opens up an assembly, you can force it to look in this folder first for the relating documents. What that means to you is that we can force your users using routing to almost always reference the library that we've created for them. Now this path automatically gets pushed here once we specify the path in here. Now that also helps us set a few things going forward. And let me uh, uh, cancel out of this and just show you uh, a little bit in, uh, in routing here. Let me just uh, get started uh, with another route. I'm just going to drag a flange in here again because it does uh, help us with a few other things here. Now when it asks me for the route and in in the information like the templates that I mentioned up, down here it's asking me for the elbow and the pipe that I want to use. Now, if I hit the little browse here, I happen to be pointing to a different library. I happen to be pointing to a location that's not the specified library here. So I want to just kind of point out what would happen here if I were to accept this. Uh, i got to actually pick... All right, uh, so it doesn't even like these ones here, so let's pick a pipe. Okay, so what happens now is if I decide to start a route and I'm working outside of that library folder, the system's going to give you a little message to say, hey, you know what? This part that you said you wanted me to use doesn't belong to your library. I'm okay to use it, but it's quite possible that you're references are going to be pointing to something outside of that folder. And when you try to move these things around, 
your references could change. So there's a little bit of a, 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 an issue where you don't really want to work outside the library because it could affect you in uh, changing route properties, changing components, and causing failures essentially down the road. So um, let's just cancel out of that for a moment. So back to this conversation, we, we've specified the routing library. And by doing that, as soon as I do that for the first time, that's what creates this uh, routing library.db. That's what creates the database for us. This database is actually going to control all the components that are going to be part of the routing library. Now, to kind of gloss over this a little bit further, the rest of these things, whether they're piping and tubing or electrical cabling, are just files that are created within this library as a possibility. Within that library, you specify a path. Things like uh, Excel files that list any tubing that we have. Uh, we have coverings and, and uh, cables and uh, coverings for both electrical and piping and tubing. These are all just XML files or Excel files that most likely you'll want to store in some sort of library system very similar to the routing library. But for pipe and tube, this one is very, very important. <clears throat> On top of that, you can set what units your library manager is using. Now, this is this entire interface. And as you see me get a little bit further on, um, you'll see why units are important. Now, once I have all these paths set, I do have the ability to save the settings. Now, saving the settings allows me to go to the next person's machine and load in these routing settings files, and it sets all the values of everything I set in the routing library manager. Okay, so this SQY file can be shared amongst the groups. And most importantly, it's just to make sure everybody is pointing to the same routing library. You'll notice there's also a load settings option. So let's call that step number one. I want to set my routing file locations. Regardless of what I have in my task pane, I want to make sure the routing library manager knows that those are the folders that I'm working for routing. Okay. Now, if we go back here for a moment, what is the next step in that? Uh, there's one other piece, I guess, to the routing file locations. Um, there's a path in there to a routing template. Now, this routing template, I mentioned it's kind of like a part template for SOLIDWORKS, but it's specific for routing. It contains custom properties that are specific for routing so that when you utilize that, it has everything you need in it. This routing template path has to, wherever that's located, has to be uh, a, a path for your templates. And let me explain that a little bit further. Uh, when we go to Tools Options, under File Locations, you have a file location for a document template. What you can't do for a routing template is to point to it in a location that's not in these folders that are specified here. Okay, you want to add that path to the folder list in there so that shows up correctly. That's this one here. Okay, just to, to be clear on that. So now we know that we've pointed it to the correct database or to the correct location. But now we have this concept of a database. And what is this database even used for? Now some of the you use in piping are just used to drag and drop out of the design library. So why would we want a database? And let me kind of uh, show you this live. I think that's the, the best uh, illustration of, of what's really going on here. So the next tab over is the piping and tubing database. So this just tells me uh, it's looking for a database file, and my database file happens to be empty. 
it's saying in my piping and tubing database there are no configurations available. So let's, the best way to illustrate this is to give it something that's available. And I'm just going to go right into my existing library. I'm going to grab my, my slip-on flange uh, from that library. I'm going to just open it up. And I'm just going to do a save as. Okay, and I'm going to save it to that folder on my desktop called routing library. Okay, the same file. Now I've basically just told the software <laughs> that I want a file that's going to exist in my path. Now, I now want to bring that into my piping and tutoring database. So the first thing I'm going to do is import the data. And the software is going to say, you know what? I found a couple files here. Now, it's actually seeing the tilde file, which shouldn't affect anything. But it sees that there's a slip-on flange here. And it's asking to import it. So when I hit Start here, <coughs> what it's going to do is go into the slip-on flange and grab all the information in the flange itself and build a database to show me all the different and available sizes that I have for that particular flange. Once it's done, I just hit exit. And now you can see in just that flange, I had 106 configurations. Now here's where my conversation kind of diverts a little bit in that I now can start to analyze and see what available sizes I have. Uh, if I wanted to find out all of my 150 pound flanges uh, or the class, I can go ahead and turn on this little filter button, okay, which will bring up a pull down menu. And I can pick from that information. I'll just pick the class. And then, then it filters to show me all the ones that meet that criteria. Okay, notice it's uh, uh, contextual, so it still, it still gets the 1500 as well. But now, what if I wanted everything that's that class, but it's between uh, you know, 1 and 5? <coughs> uh, you can go ahead and specify. Oh, that one's not work, quite working right. But you can use this system to sort and filter between everything you have. Okay, so I have 27 matching configurations based upon the criteria that I had set. Okay, I can turn these on, turn these off, but it's a fantastic way to analyze what you're dealing with. Now you can imagine if I were to bring in several flanges, several elbows, several pipes and T's and reducers and all those separate files that you would need, how many different variations are in there? So this database gives you a nice little way to view it. And it builds this database by importing the data it finds the data that hits that. Okay, let's show that one more time. Let's just go grab an elbow. Uh, here's a metric elbow. Okay, let's open it up. I'm just going to do a save as. Now these already have configurations in them, so uh, I didn't do any of the setup work necessarily. But once I save them in there, I just say import data. Okay, it finds the, the components. And it just synchronizes the database with the components that are in the library. Now, you're probably already thinking to yourself, well, what is that used for? The first thing I see is, is just what I've been talking about, uh, a visual look into all the variations that I might have available to me uh, from a database. The second thing is going to be the next option. Uh, which is my route properties. Now, let me show you where this comes up so we can talk about this. If I go in to my assembly again, let's get rid of a few of these. Okay, and I'm just going to drag another flange in here to, uh, to get this thing kicked off. All 
right. All right, guess not. We'll use this one. I'm just going to turn on my routing points and we'll just start a route. So when you're in the route properties, uh, there's the route specification option. And you can see right here it says there's no specifications currently in the routing library manager. That's where this next step comes into play. What this does is it allows me to create route specifications or to organize all the things that I have in my database into groupings so that when I click on a specification, it picks the components for me. It picks the schedule and the min-max sizes I can use. It limits the amount of effort or the amount of options that you will have in order to utilize it. Okay. So what I would have to do is create a new route template here. Uh, I'll just call this uh, schedule test. Now what I do is I can either sort it by my pipe size by schedule. Okay, so we can look for a name, a property essentially inside the files for schedule or I can use a size range for the size. I'm going to use schedule in this case. You can tell it what pipe it has to use. So see what it did? As soon as I did that, it took me back to my database. <coughs> now I don't happen to have any pipe because I just moved an elbow and a flange in there, but now I can select the pieces of pipe and I can filter and search them and accept the components as part of that. Okay. So I build this template that contains only the pipe configurations I want to use and include some options that I maybe I do or don't want them to use weld gaps or I want to use a standard length with coupling. And the same thing for elbows, custom elbows, and then you can have and save this as a settings file. So you create this route property template and you can share it among your teams. And what will happen is now in SolidWorks when you're here, when you select route specification, you can pick that template and the software will automatically set all of these settings for us. So it will only pick the schedules or configurations that I've specified in that template. Now I don't think that any, our customers that are using routing are using these functions maybe because they're just not aware that they exist. But if you just want to really organize uh, the routing library and give your users uh, a much, uh, much better look at the uh, types of routes that you create internally and limit the pipes and, and elbows, this makes things a lot easier when you're uh, changing size or changing schedule. You can change the template, uh, make some tweaks from there, and, and, and kind of move on. So um, the, these three things are kind of tied together. So your piping and tubing database is created from the imported data from the location that we specify here, and it is then used to create route properties. Okay, I've been asked this a few times on how to use those, um, and they're, they're very simple to do. Now, to kind of close the loop a little bit, um, I mentioned the route properties template, predefined parameters, and so on. Um, the last part of this, and part, last part of our webinar, I wanted to make sure I showed this, but it's a, kind of a fundamental piece. Once you have the location set, You've shared your settings, you've created your database, you've created your templates. <clears throat> You're almost certainly going to continue to add components. And I just wanted to make sure I covered the ability to add components. Uh, through the library manager, there's a tool called the component wizard. Okay, let's take a look at uh, what this thing looks like. Now the routing component wizard works for whether you're doing pipe or tube or electrical. So any of these uh, will work in this case. Uh, in this case, I have a piping component. 
It's a wizard base, so you just kind of work your way through the screens here. If I hit next, it asks me what type of routing component. Um, in this case, it's going to be a valve, which is here at the bottom. And it says, okay, is it a globe valve? Is it a ball valve? Well, I happen to have a ball valve. Okay. If I hit next, uh, I need to open a part here. Let me just close this down. I'm going to open up our ball valve so it can see it. And this is uh, just sitting on my desktop here. All right. So piping, valve, make it a ball valve. Now this tool guides me through the process of making this ready for routing. Okay, so it tells me I have to add a two C points, two or more, and a routing point. For those of you who are maybe new to routing, uh, C points and R points are really the basis of how the tool works. A C point, also known as a connection point, tells the software where the pipe or tube comes into the fitting how far it comes in, what the nominal size for that pipe needs to be. The R point is when you drag and drop and utilize this in routing. This is the point that drops onto your line or point uh, for positioning. So here's what it will look like. If I want to continue on, I have to add a couple C points. So I select add. It takes me right into uh, SOLIDWORKS. I can go ahead and start making my selections for direction and point. I tell it the type of pipe that I'm dealing with. I can select the nominal size or actually select the pipe configurations and say OK. okay. If I want to add another C point, I just go right back to the routing wizard. It popped up for me. I add one on the other side using the same method. Turn a little bit so I can grab it here. Grab the things that we need, select the pipe, and, and move on. Notice each time I complete, the library manager pops back up, pops back up, and it tells me, okay, you're green, you're good to go. You've completed that. In this case, I'm still red on one of these in that I have to add a routing point. So let's get hit the add. And I just have to select a point I want to be the routing point or the point that's used when I drag and drop it. Once I have everything I need, I can continue to work my way along in the, the process. I have to add an axis. So this is just geometry that helps me to position the up and down. So I have to go into the software. Um, does it, do you do want to create a new axis? I'll tell it to go ahead and create a new axis. And very simply, in this case, uh, let's see what planes I got. I'll create an axis between two planes. This is just the axis tool inside of SOLIDWORKS kind of helping me right along. And again, as I complete it, it works my way through the system. Uh, is the part valid? This just gives you uh, an entire look at the modeling and all the items. We're looking good there. Then it checks for a design table. So it's looking into, inside the file and seeing if there's an existing design table with multiple configurations. Now, that, that ties to that uh, database, right? Because that's really what that's doing is it's looking at configurations. This one doesn't happen to have configurations right now, but it does show me a look of the configuration it has and all the properties that's associated with it. And then finally, it just tells me where I want to store it. And notice what it has here it knows that here's my library location, so you're going to store it somewhere in there. Okay, and you just give it its location and hit finish. Okay. Uh, I want routing library, we'll just save it right there and hit finish. All right. Uh, once you do that, uh, the save, save is complete, and look at what the next step is. It says, wait, do you want to add this to the piping and tubing database? If I say yes to this, it automatically brings up a synchronization of the piping and tubing database. Okay, so I can make sure 
that it's synchronized. And if I close this thing down, you can see here's my two inch ball valve. Okay, already added to my database. So all of these things tie together. Uh, for those of you using routing, you may not have jumped in here and and dealt with the piping and tubing rate database. You may not have uh, verified your routing settings and, and shared them amongst your users. Um, but I wanted to give about a half hour view here of kind of some of the back end things that will help you to set up your libraries. So I appreciate everyone uh, attending today's webinar. Um, if you have any questions, just post them in the question section. Otherwise, we'll see you at the next Lunch and Learn. Take care. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.